Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Sim UK. I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is Planet Zoo in beta and as such, it is super duper mega unstable. It pretty much falls over every time I try and start the career. Anything I do basically from this screen, it's something to do with the menu it seems, it falls over. Once we're in game, it's a bit stuttery and there's a few minor issues but on the most part it seems okay. Today I'm going to try and uh, take us through the career. I've already done it once. I did it last night, late last night. I didn't have my microphone on because I didn't want to wake my daughter because she is super excited about this, way more than I am. Um, and she kept popping in last night and saying, Daddy, how's my zoo doing? And I said, I don't know, darling. I'm not playing on your zoo. I'm trying to do the tutorial so I know how to help you play your game. She's like, oh, okay. But uh, yeah, let's, um, let's try and do the career today if we can. Mm -hmm. Ah, hey yo, add hammer to. Yeah, yeah. Hey yo, to you too. Oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. No problem, Bernie. It's good to finally meet you in person. You too, I'm mate. Bernard. Although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person okay, who buddy. calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> And even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened, and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly... Our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you in at the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better... <laughs> One that isn't on fire, less shouting that way. <laughs> I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. Right, you are. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and okay. visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Here we go. I see a grizzly. No, don't. There Did you is. know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Select My one wife of the would. bears and you'll bring up its information panel. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? So, you can either double click on it. See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close to the look camera there. at animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double-clicking on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to tell us that. Okay, but yeah, she's ready, right. Let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. Okay, I've no. marked their location for you to find. I found it. There they are. Whoa. Oh, wow. The game, the game proper started then. Okay, and uh, here he is. Leo Leo. Or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride, although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome. <laughs> Which is awesome. why I handle the training instead these days. <laughs> anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Okay. Come on, let's head over to our warthog habitat and All see right. what needs doing there. Let's do that. Let's go do that. Where's the warthog? There it is. 
Zoom. As you can see, it's a lovely space for warthogs, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. The warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select buy from the side menu. Normally the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. And I would do that. <laughs> when you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade centre, where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Oh, there's one. Well, as That's you can super see, cool those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. If I ever become a big YouTuber, a that's how I'm doing my hair. <laughs> but these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs' habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat, and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Done. And animals I think... also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> That bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Thanks, now, Nancy. Our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and watsits all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. Okay. It's over near the hippos. Now, I have a bit of an issue, mostly um, what I've seen of the habitat building, uh, barrier building and just construction of paths, etc. is very good. But, and I'll highlight it here, I do struggle okay. to replace Job number one parts here is of to a barrier. A habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. So that's what I've got here. And uh, obviously it wants me to place it in this area. Now this works really well. No problem at all right. with that. Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use. So I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. And uh, that bit works pretty darn well as well. Uh, and if you come down here uh, and click on straight edges, then you can do right angles. Otherwise, you can't. Took me a little while to figure that out. I think, I think it's probably the same in Planet Coaster, but Good work. whatever. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. So you'd think this would be really easy, wouldn't you? So I think 
this is an, the only area that I've seen that needs to be fixed. So, now I have done this once already, but I'm not entirely sure how I did it, if I'm being totally honest with you. Because it just doesn't, doesn't seem to want to actually do it. So I am struggling. I think, I can't even remember how I did it last time. Now if I could, I would take a piece of barrier out. I don't think I can. I can move the uh, the fixed point. But there doesn't seem to be any way... Oh, okay, well that's closer. There we go. It's really funky. Not good at all. And uh, that was due to the stutters. Oh. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on. Because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. Indeed. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Alright, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Indeed. Let's get four of them in here. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Mm -hmm. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter, so guests can get a really good view of the animals. So that's that done. Uh, and that's how you get your, oh, your first star up. The ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, oh heaven forbid they ever escape. Yeah, <laughs> right. speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> so the last time I did this, for some reason, well, the... Bernie certainly seems impressed. <laughs> Did he do his speed camera joke? Yes, he did. Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. So, you can see that these guys are hungry and thirsty, but there's no food. And unless you call somebody here to fill them up, it takes ages. I don't know why, but I nearly lost one of the ostriches last time I did this, because it took so long for one of these guys to turn up. But, uh, yeah, seems like I've got it working this time, and uh, they should be absolutely fine. Let's move on to this next piece. Uh, what are we doing? Facility... Keeper's hut. So if we hold Z, we can really spin it round, or we can just press Z and it'll do 90 degree spins like so. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Oops. 
Uh, if you press C, now, it gives you complete model blue manipulation is control. Using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. So this is the heat map work. down here, bottom now left. Now the keepers can start using the hat to And you can change food. it to... And thanks uh, to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, <clears> but I'm afraid there's <throat> nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Okay, thanks for that. Um... So, yeah, the, the heat map's really useful. I mean, especially when you're sort of checking out your animals. You can see that all the animals here are sort of averagely okay. And uh, only the ones that we've just put in ourselves are in... Well, the tigers are in pretty good condition. It's over here. Oh, the, the turtles, tortoises, turtles, peacocks. They're all okay. Hippo's not perfect uh, condition. But so, yeah, there's lots of really good, useful information just using the heat map alone. Uh, right, where, do, where did she want us to go? Over here, what's this? Righty, your next job is to build a habitat. Ah, uh, yes. From scratch. Well, cool. Wood and concrete, I expect. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead and build it. And don't forget the habitat gate. I won't forget it's the habitat. It's always best to place the habitat gate close to the keeper hut. As it happens, there's one quite near to the trade centre. There's a keeper hut over here somewhere. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. Yes. Okay, well, uh, I did this before, um, and I I tried to do it the same way that we did it with the, uh, with the ostriches. So I built the entire thing, and then I tried to add a window afterwards. But because it's in a, a tutorial, it actually locks it down the second you complete it. Uh, the second you sort of secure it all the way around. So... Uh, I'm going to learn from that mistake. I'm going to try and put the glass in first. And then build the uh, the necessary parts on the around the outside. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go with straight edges. And uh, try and get this as perfect as possible. Although the, the the replacement mechanic is a bit funky, and it really is, um, for the most part, I'd say that the whole building aspect of the of the game is is really very good. And obviously, you can construct your own things as well. Are there any other donation boxes over here? I don't think so. So this is the main path, isn't it? Just stick one in there, I think. Alrighty, and let's finish it off. With some nice brick. Now, uh, there is a way to shorten the length. There's like a shortcut key. I can't remember what it is. So we'll just do it manually for now. Whoa! Straight edge here. Again, you can't do right angles when you're using the curved wall building tool, which is uh, a smidge irritating, but I, I kind of get why. I also find it's a bit easier if you sort of bring yourself up above it like that. Just reduce the length again. Straight edge. Now we can get, now we can go super long. Ah, there's a, a conflict. Okay, 
Ah, oh, blast it. Blast it, it's swapped to flipping... Uh, Swap to flipping glass again, didn't it? That's what I mean. It is a little bit clunky. See, it did it did it again. It's not. I mean, if you do it, this is obviously like only the second time I've played this game. But if you do it often, I suppose you'd you'd spot that easier. But uh, yeah, it is a bit of a struggle at the moment. So let's put the gate in, and we'll put the gate in over on this side somewhere where it fits. Oh, come on, please. I can get it to squeeze in there. Right then. Ah, no, that's no good. No, that's no good. It needs to be... Oh, God. Right-clicking also does not remove... How do you delete something? I don't know how you remove a piece of wall. Doesn't seem to be any way to remove it. Oh, there we go. Alrighty. So, what I'm going to do here is just take out a section of the wall. Uh, probably that as well. And then I'm just going to put a straight piece across here. Is that? Yeah, that's brick. And hopefully I can fix a gate in there. Perfect. Now, Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? I think that's a good the idea. The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a minimum height of 4 meters. What did she say? <laughs> now. Bernie takes safety very I was trying to get rid of that rock. Zoos, so we yeah. should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you I think? I agree. Yes, I agree. The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great. Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a minimum height of 4 metres. Not quite 4 metres there, is it? So, get a little bit higher. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat cool. gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Let's do it. Go get some tigers. These are a bit more expensive, as you would expect. Select all, send to zoo. Whilst our trusty Both. caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. Yes. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. So, I want to put the feeding station kind of over here. So, let's go habitat... Yes. Oh, I have to do it your way. Okay, fine. Pop that just there. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into Terrain and selecting the Water Tool. There we go. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? So the this, this is 
quite a new feature um, and it's good I like it a lot so you've got you've got obviously this displays everything and you can filter by type beds and shelters he does include as food and water enrichment items um, and then when you're in this filter you have a sub filter here to allow you to filter by food enrichment toy enrichment and climbable enrichment so if we whack one of these down here and one of these down here, which is basically frozen blood okay, it's really in a pumpkin. it's starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although, given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. So I'm just going to use a blueprint this time. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Okay, right, so... Hello. Click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Yeah, so basically, uh... Okay, then. Open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Yep, okay, I'll do that. So basically, uh, this uh, area has, say, 100% square feet. And if 13% of that is short grass and 65% of that is long grass, then by painting... A different terrain uh, on it balances these things out and obviously you've, you've got to get within the white marker so we're aiming for less long grass we could get away with a little bit more short grass but ideally we're going for soil now as far as I understand it light soil heavy soil makes no difference whatsoever it's just soil so they're quite happy I think to have uh, just soil of any type painted around. We'll do a bit over here. So they've got the option. And so we've still got a little bit too much grass, so I need to just paint out some more of this grass. I'm going to make it look as natural and realistic as I can. So what I've accidentally done there is I've got rid of some of the short grass. So if we come over here to short grass, and if I just zoom in a smidge, we can see there's quite a lot of long grass right over then. here. All so we'll just paint that out, and, trees and then we should be fine. More continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the environment tab. Okay, so if we click on one of the tigers, come up here and go to the environment now, tab. As you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. So we will. We'll get rid of those. You can um, find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. So these wattle bushes are not suitable, so we'll get rid of those. And it was the tree, wasn't it? Was it this tree? Acacia tree, yeah. Is that a wattle bush as well? Oh, that's bracken. What's this thing? It's a hawthorn bush, I think that's okay. That's bracken, that's bracken. Okay, so if we go back... If we go back to the tiger... And click on the environment you should see that there are no wrong type of plants so what you want to do is you want the continent to be asia the biomes to be tropical temperate grassland you come over here to your filter you open up nature and you 
click on temperate, tropical, grassland, continent, Asia. And then effectively, all of these plants are suitable for this area. So I know this tree is n enormous. Uh, and there's some slightly smaller trees available. I'm going to try and uh, just plonk these down in in a re realistic, reasonable manner so that it looks nice. Um, one there. I'll plonk one there. And what you'll find is that certain plants and uh, items give a better boost than others. So uh, you can see here that the coverage is still only 5%. And uh, if I put two of those down, does that bring us up to 6%? Not quite. Put a few more down. And eventually it will get up there to 6%. There we go. So obviously something like... Uh, these little plants isn't going to make a, a huge difference straight away. But uh, I'll stick some of the really big trees in and in a second. We can really sort of appreciate how that's going to look. This, I mean, this one is just enormous, isn't it? So we're on 8% at the moment, and this tree will double that up to 16. But uh, is that in keeping? Is that realistic? I don't know. That's for you to decide. There are some shorter, fatter alternatives. But uh, yeah, overall, the bigger the, the plant, the more effective it seems to be. Okay, let's, uh, let's go finish this off with some bird nest types. Some of these bigger brackeny type bushes are good. Unless you put them in like that and then they look silly. So the manipulation of these uh, foliage models is, is a little bit tricky, if I'm being honest. If you press, there is a way you can raise and lower them, but I can't remember the hotkey to do that. Uh, and I'm, I don't want to go look. Not in this video anyway, for the next video I will. The next video is all going to be about building and creating and making the most of what we can but for the most part I think I think it gets the message across pretty well and you can make it look pretty unique Now these are pretty cool. I like these trees. These are more sort of in keeping with the environment. And, uh, I'm going to click on one of these tigers again, see where we're at. 18%. Okay, we're very nearly there. Got a couple of smaller trees to accompany these big trees. And I think... I think you'll agree that's starting to look pretty pretty cool, pretty authentic. So there is a way to manipulate these models to uh, sit properly, but I uh, just can't remember what the key to do that is. All right, we should be nearly there, I'd say. A couple more bits. Couple of big bushes at the back, maybe.
for 25%. So we're there. That should be good then. Right, what's our next objective? Increase plants welfare to 90%. How have I not done that? So they want some elephant ear plants because there's zero percent at the moment. So where's the elephant ear plant? That look like this one. I think this is probably it. Just want a few of these. There we go. <clears throat> they say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Right you are. Now then. Just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, oh, I suppose one. gandering would just be for geese. <laughs> Quite funny. Okay, so there's a peafowl. Expand their social welfare and we can get a bit more detail. Too few adults. That's the problem. Uh, now, they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. So they need a minimum of two. Right, as you can see, the peafowls need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Now that's well, actually... Off you pop to the animal market. That's actually quite important because um, unlike Jurassic World Evolution, where all the animals are female, here it is important the ratio you have of male to female adult uh, um, animals, which could be very interesting when you're breeding and one of the child uh, male adults becomes an adult you might start to see there's a bit of conflict and a bit of fighting there, in which case you would have to move the peafowl or the the uh, uh, the, the peacock to, uh, to another zoo, perhaps. Alternatively, you can um, apply contraceptives to any of the animals, which is quite interesting as well. It's an interesting thing that they've added there, I like. So, uh, let's get three more peafowls in. We'll have those delivered. Select all three. It's into the zoo. Good work on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Okay, snow leopard time. Where are you at? Over here. This is quite Just cool as like well. People, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. In the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barriers for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. So this is actually a lot trickier than... Again, it's the replacing of glass that I just find incredibly difficult. Um, so if I go to barriers, you can see this is a two-way glass. Well, I've got rid of that nice and easy. That doesn't usually happen. Now, the problem I have is, which way round does it go in? Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. And so there you go. The so I've done it backwards again. It's too hot, even with the terrible British weather. You Ooh, should have cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. Okay, this time, that isn't even glass. That's concrete. So, I mean, we've still achieved the task because we've given it more privacy. But that isn't what I meant to put in there. So the whole replacing of things is just complicated. 
because it keeps switching on its own without my permission or knowledge, I guess. Um, you can see, trying to get rid of it now, I don't think it's possible because effectively she's moved on. So I think we just have to settle for that, which is a bit annoying, but, uh, you know, uh, the tutorial lets us carry on, so that's fine. What are we doing here? Sorry, uh, open the temperature view mode. Okay, so we go here, temperature, and we can see how hot cool it is. So we've got to add three coolers, which I think are in facilities. No, habitat. There we go. So we'll pop one over here, one over here. You can find here. heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure while. to explore them and make good use of them. It'll Increased take a terrain while welfare to 100 percent to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters. But now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopard's terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. Yeah, so if you go to terrain, you can see that um, the rock, the snow is quite low, but none of it is red, which is, I, th I think, quite interesting. So I guess what you would have to do is go to the... Oh, why am I still on barrier? Come off here, come off. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So now you can see that you do need to have... Uh, less grass and more snow and rock so what we'll do because uh, rock is a bottom layer snow is a top layer so snow can melt and disappear and when it does you'll be left with rock if that makes sense so we'll go to the terrain and we'll grab the paint and again i don't think smooth or rough rock makes any difference at all so we'll just paint in let's take that heat map off so we can see what we're doing it's going to paint in some rocks I'm not going to do it all rock, but a lot of it's going to be rock. Until she's happy. So that's 36%. I'll do some rough rock. Uh, I'm going to do that over this side. Let's say she's got some. So I think she likes it. And then finally, we're going to put some snow. Now, depending on the temperature of the area that you're painting the snow, it will either melt, which is what's happening in that corner, or it will stay which is what's happening in this area here. And then, all of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Certainly is. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should go into zoo management and then into the animals section. But then you can filter by, well, oh my god, we've got some serious problems here. See, Ring-tailed this lemur. List shows you the animals' overall welfare. So, if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate button. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. You go have a cup of Nancy, thank you. The sooner you get out of the way, the better. I think actually, uh, yeah, I think he's just been in there and fed them. So, we've got some protesters over here. Because our the condition of our lemurs is too low, we've got some protesters here saying we shouldn't have animals in it and so on and so forth. Uh, but, for some reason, I can't currently click on anything in here. So I don't think the lemurs maybe in habitat habitat is allowed to be Yeah, dehydrated. Look. So, okay. Now I can select the habitat. It's a it's a little bit clunky the beta, I've got to be honest. So seriously, seriously thirsty. The click on here you can see no water whatsoever. Which is weird because there's water here. So, why can't I right click and get a flipping cool keeper? There we go. They're not drinking for whatever reason. I think I'm going to put another habitat thing down. I've, I haven't lost an animal yet, but uh, there's a good chance it's going to happen right now. 
Where's the water bowl? I don't know why they're not drinking. There's a keeper on route. Let's just click on that and go see where he is. Here he comes. Slowly but surely. I'm hoping he's going in the right direction. Okay, so he has to go back to the hut. To get, I assume, the watering can and the food and the stuff that he needs. 13 animals starving. This is not good. I think we need some more staff. Can I get some more staff? Will, it, will the game let me? Uh, so we need some more keepers. Boom. Look, it's exactly the same person. Yeah, that's weird. Right, so we've got loads of keepers now, which is not normally what you need to do. But uh, if I open this... You see, they're not... They're not eating properly, and I do not know why. There's food there. All they have to do is go and eat. I've noticed this quite a bit. Now, I'm assuming it's just a beta thing, but they get really... I mean, they're, like, starving so quickly. And when you go and look, they've got food and they've got water. They're just not drinking or eating it for some reason. Now, the other thing you can do, as I mentioned about the heat map, is animal welfare. So you can see they're all green... Uh, these these lima guys are still red. And there's like two seriously sick lemurs over there. Why on earth they're not drinking, I do not know. Maybe they're stuck. Because he's kind of behind that rock. It's possible they're stuck, I don't know. But I'm going to try and get all the other animals up to 100%. So let's go focus on these guys. Now, I know what's wrong with these because I've done these already. But they are looking for enrichment. Toy and food enrichment. So if we go to the... Hab no. Facilities? I forget now. Habitat, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. So food enrichment for... So if you click on here, over on the right-hand side, it tells you who this is suitable for. So that's elephants and stuff, uh, that's brown bears, black bears, okay, this one, that's for giraffes, which are in this area I think, yes, so that's good for them, uh, but not for the zebras, what are zebras like these things, okay, that's for the zebra, and uh, boost them, lovely, thank you. Food enrichment is better. Toy enrichment. So they want something like this. A rubbing pad, I think. Nope. This one? Yep. Yeah, plain zebra. So I'm going to put two of these in. Kind of like a car wash. A zebra car wash. And their food enrichment is still low. So what else can I give them? I'm not going to want that, are they? <laughs> um, not much the zebras like, it seems. Uh, well, maybe we'll just put another one of these in, I guess. I was wondering whether the physics would be that good, and they are. So, that's good. So, he's 100% now. Uh, the giraffes are 100%. That's good. Go back to the heat map and see who else is in need of our assistance. What's this? We have a new lemur, it seems. So, lacking food enrichment. So, what are lemurs like? Probably something like this. Maybe this one. 
Maybe none of these. A ring-tailed lemur, okay. So, I don't think there's enough space. Or oh, we can just squeeze it in there. Something weird is happening here. I'm not sure why there are so many lemurs turning up. This certainly hasn't happened to me before. Like an unlimited number of lemurs arriving. Nutrition. Hydration. There's water there. Just go drink. I think they must have got stuck. There we go. I think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colours. There's still you. lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Love to. Mm. One Sounds dead like animal. You've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming, <laughs> all the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? <laughs> Don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. <laughs> so we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy coffee. <laughs> uh, he was stuck. Definitely was stuck. Scenes, like. Considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have, obviously. But you see, zookeeping's Ooh. not for my daughter. He's Don't get be me fighting. Wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals, but she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm -hmm. Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Oh, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. <laughs> so for whatever reason, these two have been fighting. But uh, yeah, that's fine. I think we've pretty much dealt with that. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure if I can actually progress to the next zoo. I think I'm stuck here now. I think that's where the, the campaign tutorial ends uh, as part of the beta. So uh, I don't think we can get out of this zoo and onto the next place. But uh, yeah, hopefully that gave you some insight as to what the gameplay mechanics are like. Like I say, it is a little bit clunky, um, and hopefully the feedback will sort of encourage them to have a look at... Certainly replacing um, barriers seems really tricky to me. Um, and obviously, things like lemurs getting stuck, um, as yet, I don't know. I mean, what you can do, I was going to say, I don't know if you can pick them up, you can't. But what you can do is move them... Let's just have a little a click on that and say move. Then basically he turns into a box and that's what happens. So you can kind of move them like that, which I, I think if they get stuck, that's your only solution. So uh, there is that, I suppose. I could have done that. I didn't think of doing that until literally just then. So, yes, um, it's good. I mean, visually, it's absolutely mind-bogglingly good isn't it and the detail and the the way in which each of the animals have their own personalities etc it's just insane i'm really looking forward to full release i can hardly wait but uh, unfortunately i'm gonna have to but uh, that wraps this episode up thank you for watching and uh, any questions suggestions ideas let me know in the comment section i read them all and i do take consider into consideration what you guys say so thank you very much. See you next time. Goodbye.